Yo, what is up guys, Ghost here, and today we're going to be taking a look at X Defiance. This is a new arena shooter from Ubisoft. It's been on my radar for a good while now. I know a good portion of the Battlefield community and the Call of Duty community have been excited for this. I've played a few of the playtests here and there and certainly had some fun in doing so. And now the full game is here and it's free to play. So what the heck, may as well give it a go, right? But is this game innovative enough to potentially steal some of the limelight away from those aforementioned franchises and entice players to move over. Before we get into it, if you guys do enjoy the content here on the channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any future videos. I will, of course, continue to cover Battlefield on the channel. I'll also be keeping an eye on X Defiant as well as Grey Zone Warfare. And honestly, I'm open to suggestions if you guys have any, so feel free to leave those down below as well. Over 60% of you guys who do watch my videos are not subbed, so if you guys can check down below for me, you may think that you're subbed, but you're actually just seeing these in your recommended section, that would really be a massive help. So thank you guys so much. So your first experience of X Defiant, if it's anything like mine, is going to feel much like Call of Duty. 6v6 fast paced action with a relatively fast TTK, although it is slightly slower than CODs, and fast fluid movement. The game modes here aren't really anything new. You've seen it all before. We've got domination from COD with the three flags. There's an escort mode where you have to move a Boston Dynamics inspired robot dog along a track, which feels just like payload from Overwatch. There's King of the Hill. You get the idea. Now where Ubisoft seem to be putting a lot of their hopes as a selling point is in the characters for this game. And let's remember, this is a free to play game and therefore they are of course looking to make money primarily off of cosmetics. There are five different factions, each one coming from one of Ubisoft's iconic franchises with their own unique traits and abilities. So you've got the third echelon from Splinter Cell, they get invisibility and the ability to ping enemies through walls. You've got the Libertad Freedom Fighters from Far Cry 6 who have a bunch of healing abilities and passives. The Phantoms from Ghost Recon are all about hardiness, barriers and riot shields. The cleaners from the Division franchise can spread a bunch of fire all over the place, and DedSec from Watch Dogs 2 are about hacking and sabotage. So for each character you select, you get the faction passive, and then you pick one out of two faction abilities, and finally, you get your faction ultimate ability, once again, very much like in Overwatch. And by now, you may be beginning to notice a bit of a theme here. I've already compared this game to Call of Duty and Overwatch a couple of times, and well, that's because a lot of the things in this game seem to be heavily inspired by other titles like those. One of the Phantoms gets a mag barrier that blocks incoming projectiles, but allows you to shoot through your side. So it's basically Reinhardt's shield from Overwatch. Another character gets Cloak that cancels when you attack. One of them can throw down a healing zone for herself and her allies, to name a few. Now, there's nothing inherently wrong with being inspired by other games and reusing those ideas, but if your goal is to set yourself apart from the competition and you want to draw in the audiences from those games and retain them, you have to do something different. And I personally haven't really found anything in X Defiant that I don't feel I've already experienced several times before elsewhere. It's clear that this game was not made by passionate developers who had like an idea burning in their head that they just had to visualize and they wanted to take a risk with it. This game was created by a publisher and shareholders to make money using Ubisoft's existing franchises as a catalyst. So, you know, if you're looking for a game the likes of which you've never experienced before, I very much doubt that you're going to find that here. Now, on the other hand, if you're looking for a game like Call of Duty and you enjoy the satisfaction of grinding through battle passes and leveling up weapons and unlocking the gold camos and all of that completionist stuff and you're simply looking for something to play, you probably can't go wrong with X Defiant either. You know, whilst it isn't anything groundbreaking for me, it is still a pretty darn good game in the arena shooter genre. The movement is pretty slick for the most part. I think the crouching and the strafing animations could use a little bit more work. They seem to be somewhat sticky and unresponsive, especially if you spam A and D on your keyboard, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. It just feels a little bit sort of gluey, like you're stuck in tar. The sniper rifles in this game are actually insanely fun, and this was 
my favorite weapon to use so far. Probably because they're kind of overpowered, I will admit it. I don't know whether it's because the hitboxes are simply too big or the netcode is kind of shoddy, which it definitely is, by the way. But I was pulling off flicks and headshots that I've never been able to achieve in other shooters. On the opposite end of the spectrum, though, the shotguns, they seemed kind of lackluster. You couldn't really one-shot somebody unless you were very, very close, and so unless you snuck up on them and caught them completely off guard, there was just no way that you had time to fire off the three rounds that it took to kill somebody. Now, if you are looking for a good battle pass grind, like I mentioned before, you'd better really, really enjoy it, because let me tell you, this game is a grind. After roughly three hours of gameplay, I had only gotten one battle pass level out of 50. So with some quick maths, that would lead me to assume that I have to play for 150 hours to unlock everything in the battle pass. That's just way too many hours in my opinion, and yes you do get battle pass boosters and you do get boosters for the weapons as well, but even so you're not going to be constantly running boosters, right? I really feel like they need to tone this down a little bit. Same thing goes with the weapon progression levels. Like in most games, you unlock additional attachments by using that weapon, and it too is a painfully slow experience. Another gripe that I have is with the sound of the game. It's simply not very good. In terms of quality, it really doesn't feel very immersive to me. It's cheap, and it lacks all of the punch and the impact of other games like Battlefield that you're going to be comparing this game to. Also, the footstep audio was very bad for me, 9 times out of 10. I couldn't hear somebody's footsteps unless they were right on top of me, and it was simply too late at that point. Something else worth mentioning is that there are a bunch of potential frustrating gadgets that may well see you frothing at the mouth. I can tell you that, at the moment, the most pick faction seem to be, in my eyes at least, the third echelon, so their passive makes them completely invisible on the minimap all the time. Their first ability that you can pick gives you stealth camouflage, allowing you to camp players pretty handily, and the second one gives you wall hacks, not just for you, but for the entire team, which has a lengthy duration and a comparatively short cooldown. So if everybody on your team is playing this character, you can basically just link wall hacks for the entire round whilst you all stay off of the minimap. Oh, and their ultimate ability also gives you wall hacks and Sam Fisher's pistol, which as far as I can tell, one-shots people, and it has a seven-round magazine. Yeah. The second most played faction, I would say, are the Libertad from Far Cry 6. They have a passive that slowly heals them and allies around them all the time, and they can also pick from two different abilities, one bigger heal on themselves that also heals allies, or they can throw down a healing zone on the ground, and that heals anyone who steps on it. And then their ultimate is another really large healing zone that gives you and your allies 200% health. However, the ability in this game that absolutely takes the biscuit for me, and you're going to see me using it a lot in the background footage because I'm a scumbag, has to be the Spiderbot gadget that the DedSec faction gets. It scuttles across the map, latches itself onto the face of the first enemy it sees, and locks that enemy in place there, dealing 80% damage to them. If you have this Spiderbot, it's pretty much a guaranteed kill for free, every 20 seconds or so, or at the very least, an assist. And what's more, as soon as you drop this thing on the ground, it's going to make a beeline for the closest enemy. So all you have to do is follow the spider bot, and you know that it's going to lead you straight to an enemy. So you guys see what I mean, right? Definitely very fun abilities for the user, but they certainly have the potential to be somewhat overpowered, and I think they're going to become quite frustrating to play against in the long run, especially once people stop experimenting and they kind of settle on whatever is the meta. So I guess we should wrap this one up. I think X Defiant overall is a fun game, and it's well worth installing it and having a go, and as I've said before, if you love this style of arena shooter and you're looking for more of it, perhaps to tide you over until the next Call of Duty releases, this could be the game for you. On the other hand though, if you're looking for something new and groundbreaking and innovative, you're not really going to find anything here that you haven't experienced 10 times already. And I don't seriously see this game lasting for too long before it's quickly replaced by the next arena shooter, whether that's the next Call of Duty or something else entirely. 
but at the moment, it's certainly a welcome distraction from Battlefield 2042. What do you guys think of the game so far? Let me know in the comments. Subscribe to the channel if you enjoy the content. I've got my post-mortem of Battlefield 2042 coming up in the near future where we're going to dissect the entire game and everything that happened around it. So you guys do not want to miss that one. Make sure you are subscribed. Um, you can also catch me streaming here on YouTube and on Twitch from time to time playing Battlefield or X Defiant or who knows what else. So thank you guys for watching the video today. Take care and I'll see you all in the next one.